Section 6.1 is vectors in the plane. Um, this is going to be a short little mini chapter. We're going to talk about vectors and then eventually we're going to get into 3D figures. So um, this section is basically just about the, um, the basics of vectors. So when we talk about what a vector is, okay, this arrow here represents a vector, okay? It represents the vector AB. So here is all the definitions for a two-dimensional vector, okay? And you can read through those. Some of those you're going to need to know because they come up later, but you can read through those yourselves. Okay, so the head minus tail rule, which is, says that if an arrow has an initial point of x1, y1, and a terminal point of x2, y2, it represents the vector, and you just subtract the x's, subtract the y's. So, for example, one, when it says show that the arrow from R to S is equivalent to the arrow from P to Q. It's very simple, okay? R, S, now notice the symbol for vector. It almost looks like the symbol for ray, except there's not a whole arrow at the end. It's very simple. You take the X coordinates, X2 minus X1, so it's just like an ordered pair in that respect. Notice the notation for vector is like a little arrow at the end there. So x2 minus x1, comma, y2 minus y1. So 6 minus 2. And very simply, you just subtract. So minus a negative plus a positive. It's 3, and then 6 minus 2 is 4. Okay? So <clears throat> that is the component form of RS. Now, PQ. We are hoping that PQ turns out to be 3, 4 as well, because we want them to be equal. So let's see, 5 minus 2, 3 minus negative 1, plus a negative, 5 minus 2, 3, 3 plus 1, 4, so they are both equivalent, okay? So here's the thing, they're in, they're in different places, okay? They're in different places on, a, if you were to graph that, okay? They would be in different places, but they're the same vector, all right? They have the same components. They're just in different places on a graph, that's all. Magnitude, okay? Magnitude. Let me do this. Okay? Magnitude. Oh, we crossed it out. I was trying to highlight something. That did not work. Anywho, the magnitude of V is the length of the arrow, okay? So whenever you see absolute value of V or absolute value of U or absolute value of a letter, that's telling you that they're talking about the magnitude of the vector. And we use the distance formula to find it, okay? Now, there's two ways you can do this. Uh, one way is if... Um, you do the distance formula on the two endpoints, so the initial point and the terminal point, okay? Um, the other thing would be is you could just do head minus tail rule, okay? Do your head minus tail rule, find out the components, and then just put the components in. Okay, that would be a little shorter method to do it. We'll do both. So it says find the magnitude of the vector V represented by PQ, where P is negative 3, 4, and Q is negative 5, 2. So that would be the initial point, and this would be the terminal point. Okay, so the absolute value of V, okay, that's how we, that's how we denote magnitude, absolute value of the name of the vector. So I do distance formula, okay, an old friend. So subtract the x's, so negative 5 minus negative 3, and then 2 minus 4. Subtract the y's. So you get the square root of plus a positive, so negative 2 squared plus negative 2 squared. Okay, so that's the square root of 4 plus 4 which is the square root of 8, okay, 
when you reduce that to lowest terms, or to not lowest terms, simplify it to simplest radical form, the magnitude is 2 radical 2. So the question is going to be, well, do I have to do that? Yes, you do. You have to reduce radicals. Sorry. Okay, this next slide is real easy. Vector addition, scalar multiplication, it's easy. Scalar multiplication, basically, they put a number outside the vector, and you literally just distribute it. When you add vectors, all you're doing is you're adding the different components. So, like, for example, in part A, u plus v. So what you're going to have is you're going to add the x's, negative 1 plus 4, and then you're going to add the y's, 3 plus 7. So you get 3, 10. That's all you have to do. A scalar is literally you're taking 3, it says 3u, so u is negative 1, 3. All you do is distribute the 3 through. So it's negative 3, 9. And then in part C, they just combine it. So you do the scalars first, okay, distribute your scalars through, and then add the, the corresponding components. It's, it's super easy. Unit vectors. This is important. A unit vector, okay, if a vector has a length of 1, it's called a unit vector. Unit meaning 1, okay? Now, unit vectors, this is the formula right here, okay? Notice, remember, absolute value of V means magnitude, okay? And remember that magnitude equals, or magnitude means the length, okay? So it's a unit vector in the direction of V. That noise you hear in the background is the noise of conferences about to start. So I may get interrupted here. Okay, so that formula is a unit vector in the direction of V. Unit vectors provide a way to represent the direction of any non-zero vector. Okay, all the unit vectors have a length of 1. Okay, that's how we know it's a unit vector. So it says find a unit vector in the direction of v, negative 3, 2. So this is the vector. This is not an endpoint. This is a vector. All right? So we need to find the magnitude first. Okay? Well, negative 3 squared plus 2 squared. This is radical 13. Okay? So that's the magnitude. Now, we have to apply it to our unit vector formula. So, we come up here, all right, so u is our unit vector, 1 over the length, well that's 1 over radical 13, times the vector, well the vector was negative 3, 2. So in this case, 1 over radical 13 acts as a scalar, it's the, it's the number on the outside of the vector. So now we just distribute it through. So my vector is negative 3 over radical 13, comma, 2 over radical 13. Okay, so there's our unit vector. Now, when it says verify that it has length 1, okay, so now what you're going to do is, I'm out of room, crap, here, we'll come up here we're going to do the distance formula on our new vector. Okay, so remember how this was u, u was the unit vector, u for unit. So the absolute value of u, or the length of u, is negative 3 over radical 13 squared plus 2 over radical 13 squared. So that's the square root. 9 over 13, I'm just squaring these now, 4 over 13, so that's the square root of 13 over 13. Well, 13 over 13 is 1, and the square root is 1. So, that's how we know it's a unit vector. When I plug the, when I plug the actual components of the unit vector into the distance formula, the length of that vector is 1. All right, so that's all you needed to know about unit vectors. Okay, direction angles. Okay, direction angle right here is the angle theta that the vector v makes with the positive x-axis. 
okay? So what they do is they use trigonometry to figure out the horizontal component and the vertical component, okay? When we solve for those components, that's called resolving the vector, okay? So here is your formula. Now remember, absolute value of V is the magnitude. I'm going to keep coming to that so you guys remember. Okay, so they want us to find the components of the vector V with direction angle 115 and magnitude 6 using no technology except to approximate the exact trigonometric solution. Okay, here's what that means. So we have to find V. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're going to plug into this formula. Okay, so the magnitude is 6 times cosine 115. And our y component is 6 times sine 115. Okay, so 6 cosine 115 is roughly negative 2.54. And 6 sine 115 is about 5.44. Now, notice, this point up here is negative 2.54, 5.44. Okay? That's the terminal point. That's where it ends. It starts at the origin and ends up here. Now, if you think about it, that vector is in the second quadrant, 115 degrees is in the second quadrant. That is not a coincidence. Okay, that's how it's supposed to happen. Okay, so when you find the direction angle, we're going to do the next example, you're going to find the direction angle. Where the vector is on the coordinate plane is going to affect what the measure of the angle is. Okay, so this is just a plug and chug example. Now, to do this, now it says find the magnitude and direction angle. So this time, they're telling us what to do. Okay, they're telling us the magnitude, or they, we have to find the magnitude, we have to find the direction angle. So the first thing we have to do, magnitude, absolute value, 3 squared plus 2 squared, okay, equals radical 13. So there's our magnitude, okay, we've already finished the first part of the problem. Now, by the way, this vector is in the first quadrant, okay? So our angle is going to be between 0 and 90 degrees. We don't know exactly what, but we're going to find out. Okay, so now for the direction angle, all right? So u equals 3, 2. But if I go back to my formula... In this case, it's u, not v. This is what I'm setting 3, 2 equal to. Okay? So, absolute value of u, cosine theta. Absolute value u, sine theta. Okay? Now, set each component equal to each other. Now, here's the thing. Okay? You don't have to do two equations here. Okay? You can just use cosine for an equation, and that's it. So in other words, I would take the first entries and just plug those in for each other, and set them equal, I should say. Okay? Well, we already know that the magnitude, absolute value of u, is radical 13. Okay? So now this is just a trig equation. Divide both sides by radical 13. Okay? But you have to find theta. And right now you have cosine theta. So, what do I do? I take the inverse cosine of 3 over radical 13. Okay? Now, when I do that, put in my calculator, I get approximately 33.69 degrees. So there is my direction angle. So here was my magnitude. That was the first part. Check. Direction angle. Check. 33.69 is an angle in the first quadrant. We expected that because that's where uh, the vector was. Okay? So that's how to do that first one. Now the second one, 
we're going to do on this slide right here. So v was negative 2, negative 5. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. Absolute value of v, square root, negative 2 squared plus negative 5 squared. Okay, so that's the square root of 29. Okay, so there's our magnitude. Okay, now let's find the direction angle. Now, by the way, this vector is in the third quadrant. Okay, so that means our angle is going to be between 180 and 270. Okay, watch what happens. So, absolute value of V, cosine theta, absolute V, I'm running out of room, sine theta. Okay, so again, all you have to do is take the first uh, entries and just set those equal. So negative 2 equals absolute v cosine theta. But absolute v was radical 29. We already found that. So divide. So I get negative 2 over radical 29 equals cosine theta. So I do the inverse cosine of negative 2 over radical 29. Now I get 111.8. Okay. However, 111.8 is not in the third quadrant. Okay. Because you see, here's the thing. Watch. Here's my vector. And the direction angle is this angle right here. Okay, so it can't be 111.8. 111.8 is in the second quadrant, so what do I do? Well, here's what I do. In this situation, I have to do 360 minus 111.8, and that gives me 248.2 degrees. Okay, so the big key with the direction angle is understanding what quadrant your vector is in. Okay, so it's not always going to be as easy as just, oh, whatever number I get, I get. you got to make sure you understand what quadrant the vector's in. That will help you determine what the direction angle is. Okay, so there is, I know it's a little lengthy, but um, there was a lot of stuff to discuss. So that is 6-1.